everyone, how's it going? This time we have the iPad in front of us on the Fox Tech YouTube channel. You probably know the deal. We are going to explain something to you. And at this time, the topic is how you can make the iPad screen black and white. And uh, there are some different ways how you can go about that. For whatever reason you want to do it, it doesn't matter. But if you want to make your iPad black and white, I'm going to show you the first method is, of course, by going to the settings where all the stuff usually happens. So go ahead and open it up like this. And now you have to go to the accessibility. So click on accessibility and you can see voiceover, zoom. But also one of the options is display and text size. So tap on that. And when you go in here, you can see there are some different things, usually about the size of the text and colors and inverting and filters and stuff. But when you scroll down a bit more, you can see color filters and you can see there is the color palette. So you can see exactly how it's going to look on your iPad. But when you enable the color filters, there are some different things. The first one is literally grayscale and grayscale is what makes the iPad look black and white. So this removes every color from the iPad, makes it, it makes it look like this. And that's really useful. So that's one of the options to go for in case you want to make your iPad black and white. You can always just come back to the, to the settings and disable the color filters altogether to make it appear normal again. However, this is just the first way how you can go about it. By the way, guys, if you want to know everything about your iPhone apps, you have to click the link down below in the description. It's a 100% free education platform where I publish like video editing courses. There is going to be the all apps explained course, which is coming up. It's going to explain every single app on your iPhone. It's going to be really cool. So go ahead and check out that link. It's free to access. So yeah, go ahead and do that right now. You can also utilize the zoom feature, which basically does the same thing, but a little bit differently. So again, when you go to the settings, tap on accessibility and you can see zoom is right here. So I have the zoom feature turned on. This is what you should have. It's of course the way to double tap with three fingers to zoom it in and stuff. However, the zoom feature also lets you triple click with three fingers. So if you go like this, you get to this section and this allows you to choose a filter and you click on that. You can also choose a grayscale. So that's basically how you can also do that. It does the same thing, but as I said, a little bit differently because you can always access it from anywhere. You don't have to go to the settings to find that feature. You can just find it all the time in here. Keep in mind that these are independent of each other. And this means that when I go to the settings and in the accessibility, in the text, enable the color filters like this, come back to the home screen, I can still triple click and click on that and grayscale is not enabled. So I can enable it twice perhaps. So this may be kind of confusing. You can see I have the grayscale enabled twice. Now, when I go to the settings and disable the color filters, it still stays black and white, which may be confusing because there are two ways how you can do that. So from the zoom as well as from the uh, accessibility display settings. So that's the two ways how you can go about that. However, there are more ways how you can trigger or enable it. If you really wanted to, you can, for example, enable the, uh, um, the assistive touch. So if you go to the accessibility and go to the touch section, you can also enable the assistive touch, which is going to be the floating button in here. So you can also keep it on the screen all the time. And you may decide that the single tap is going to make sure that you uh, do or turn on some different things. So yeah, you can see many different things. You can add shortcuts, you can open whatever stuff you want. So you can also utilize that to get to that section. So that, that would be useful as well, but I'm going to keep it turned off. But you also have the accessibility shortcut and accessibility shortcut basically allows you to invert the colors. So I'm going to uh, see, you're going to see that accessibility shortcut basically is something that's going to be triggered by triple clicking the power button on your iPad. It is useful for me. It is color filters and guided access. I'm going to come back to the settings and disable guided access. So it doesn't mess with that. And you can see that the only thing within accessibility shortcut is color filters. So when I click on triple click it like this, you can see that it switches to black and white. So I don't even have to go to the settings or do anything. I can just triple click the power button on my iPad and make sure that it just switches to the grayscale. So that's another option. You can see that there are many different ways how you can go about that. It just depends on you. You can also go ahead and download the shortcuts app 
on your iPhone or iPad. I already have it set up on my iPhone. So the way I have it, for example, on my iPhone, that is that I have my iPhone in the grayscale or black and white. And when I, for example, open up the YouTube, it's going to make sure that everything is in full color. So it works nice. But when I leave the app, it makes everything black and white again. So that's useful. I have set it up inside of my shortcuts. So when I go to the shortcuts, you can see exactly how it works. When I open 14 apps and when I close the, the 15 apps or 14, whatever, it changes the color of my iPhone. And you can also set it up the same way on your iPad. You can decide that when you open up the settings, everything's going to become black and white. Or when you leave the settings, everything's going to be colorful again. So many options available depends on what you want and how you want to utilize it. So I'm going to wrap up this video right now. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found it useful and informative. Please leave a thumbs up if you did. And also subscribe so you never miss future Fox Tech tutorials. Thanks a lot for watching. See you guys later. Peace out until then.